Hi, everyone. David Bastel here, host of the Real Estate Edition podcast. We're back today with the fourth episode from our Live at Reality bonus series recorded in Niagara Falls at our reality conference back in February. Today's feature speaker is Duncan Stewart. Duncan is the Director of Technology, Media, and Telecommunications Research for Deloitte Canada. We talked about private 5G, how it is heading to Canada, but you may not expect it until 2021-22. Also, Edge AI, VR goggles, self-driving cars, a wide variety of topics. But before we go on to the interview, I want to share a few updates about ARIA's We Have Your Back COVID-19 Relief Plan. ARIA is proud to have partnered with LifeWorks by Marno Chappelle, offering members and their family access to a 24-7 well-being solution. The program provides access to mental health and financial, physical, and social support programs. LifeWorks is available at no cost, 24-7, 365 days a year, and can help you and your family deal with a wide range of personal and work issues. For more information or to access the service, please visit www.ariacovid19info.com forward slash relief. ARIA is also partnering with the Royal Bank of Canada to help support you and your business both through the current situation and as you take steps necessary to adapt for future success. RBC will be offering financial advice and exclusive webinars specific to ARIA members. For more information about RBC support, visit www.ariacovid19.com forward slash relief. And finally, I want to remind you to sign up for our popular Leadership 200 course, Becoming a Leader, which is now available online, free to all members until November 2020. Now, here's our chat with Duncan Stewart. You're listening to a special episode of The Real Estate Edition with hosts Dave Bastel and ARIA President Sean Morrison. Duncan, thanks for joining us. Uh, some takeaways, three main takeaways from your presentation. Uh, what's a good recap of what you spoke? So the, there's sort of two pluses and a, a minus, if you will. The two pluses are there's a new thing out there called private 5G. It's it's 5G, fifth generation wireless technologies, but it's private. It's for it's for a shopping mall. It's for a factory. Uh, the advantages are it's more private uh, and secure. It's cheaper. It's more resilient. It doesn't go down as often. Yep. Uh, offers additional features. Uh, lots of lots of great things. This is real early. This is barely getting started worldwide and won't even start in Canada till 2021, 22. But the real Real estate industry, you think long term, you think 20, 30, 40 years, uh, 40 years from now, everybody's going to have a private 5G network and the real estate industry needs to get out in front on that one. The other one I talked about as a plus is edge AI. Most of us are familiar with artificial intelligence and machine learning, but almost all of that has historically been done in the cloud. The edge devices, uh, cameras, robots, sensors, smartphones, tablets, they were dumb as dirt. That's changing. Uh, you can put a processor for three bucks or three cents on an edge device. Uh, uh, allowing it to do some pretty remarkable things without a network connection. Think about that in terms of greater privacy and security, mm -hmm. uh, but also the ability for things to, to work even when the network goes down. Uh, that's going to be a multi-tens of billion dollar market and real estate's going to need to be all over that. The negative was uh, I had a little bit of time talking about things that weren't going to happen. Things like VR goggles, those just are not catching on. Self-driving cars, one day, but not for a decade or two. So uh, you got to be aware of the hype out there. There's a lot of important trends in real estate, uh, but there's also a lot of things that are not going to happen for decades. Now, Duncan, I want to talk to you a little bit about your predictions roadshow. I know that you meet with over 100 of the top tech, media, and telecom companies globally each year. And, uh, you know, what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge for realtors in the new decade and how can they, uh, they work together to overcome it or to future proof their business? Well, interestingly, one of the things that isn't a big challenge is what happens to bricks and mortar retail? That's it's not going away. More stores are opening worldwide than closing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Inside a big mall or something like that, you've got some tenants changing. Don't get me wrong. But the idea that digital takes over and, and physical retail goes away, not a thing. Uh, the other one that I would definitely hear as the biggest challenge is how, do, how does real estate, how do realtors work with AI? 
I mean, we just talked about edge AI. That's pretty simple stuff, facial recognition, voice. Where it gets more complicated is what are the essential functions of a realtor? And if a, if a robot can play chess or Go or, or Jeopardy, can it, can it replace a realtor? The answer for now appears to be no. How can a realtor use the power of AI to do their job better, service their customers better? It's not like they get replaced, but they do need to re-educate themselves. What can I, how does my job change? change with the power of AI so that I can do my job better. Usually, by the way, and this is good news, it's about replacing the dull, monotonous, boring stuff. Uh, things like invoicing and, oh, this contract, this, you know, here's a 34-part contract and, and part three just got finished and now how do we invoice that? That's the stuff that actually AI will be good at automating and making uh, the average realtor's life uh, less humdrum and more of the interesting stuff. Duncan, when we have guests on, we, we like to ask them about their field and say, if you could go back and tell the, your version of yourself when you were just starting in the industry, something that you know today that would have been helpful when you were entering the, your industry, what, what main focus point would you tell yourself if you could? buy the heck out of Apple at 92 cents. <laughs> no, I'm not, because I'm, I'm, I'm a former fund, fund manager, and we were worried Apple was going to actually go under, and they, they ended up getting a large loan and turning it around and becoming $1.3 trillion company. So that would have been some pretty stellar advice. We may not have been talking. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, uh, my, my private jet would have taken me. No, I actually have some real advice. When you try starting a new job, finding a new job, write your own job description. Create a job that, that, that one, makes you happy, because one, that means you don't get burned out and go crazy. But number two, it means that if you've, if you've designed the job yourself, you're probably the best person in the world to do that job, so it's harder for them to fire you. And I've got a real example of this. I started work at a pension company back uh, in the 1990s, and they didn't have a uh, uh, tech, dedicated tech analyst, and yeah. I came in to be that. And I said, you know what would be cool? Why don't we start a little baby tech fund? Just give me a few few bucks and I'll, I'll, manage, I'll manage 20, 30, 40 different technology stocks. Let's see how I do. Over three years, it became the number one fund in Canada in terms of return. And, and basically, the rest of my career was set because I went out and I said, I want to do this one thing. Let me do that. It won't even be my whole job. It'll just be part of my job. I had more fun than you can believe and basically laid the path for my entire career. Wow. Now, I just want to ask a question about disruption. We hear all the time, oh my gosh, disruption is happening, the taxis are out, Airbnb is ruling the world. Do you see that happening to the real estate industry? Or are we asleep at the wheel? Or do you feel that uh, we're taking uh, proactive steps to, uh, to make sure that we don't get disrupted? Well, there's an answer to that. And you're going to love the answer, by the way. The reason the taxi industry got so badly disrupted by Uber and Lyft and others is because there were structural issues with the taxi industry. Uh, some of them regulatory, things like medallions, but also stuff like taxi meters, uh, you know, mandatory service, uh, licensing requirements, all kinds of stuff. That industry was ripe for disruption. Uh, in fact, uh, when I look at stuff like Airbnb and its impact on the hotel industry, hasn't been a real big one so far. I look at, at, at co-working spaces, those have not had a huge impact so far. My view is that disruption is an awful lot easier to happen if you're, if you're targeting an industry that has some, some bad structural flaws. By and large, the real estate industry isn't in such bad shape. I think that there will be people who try quote unquote disrupting real estate, but at the margins, a couple things will happen. One. Uh, it won't work, which happens a lot, or two, it will work and the large incumbents will respond and copy it. It's a lot like fintech. You look at a lot of the things going on in fintech, you get this fintech disruptor goes in and goes, oh, I can do global money transfers for less money, and the banks go, okay, well, we can do that too, and they do. So I think that's probably the future of the real estate industry, responding to disruption, but from a position of relative strength. So it's more about adapting than being disrupted. Exactly. Excellent. Duncan Stewart, it's been a pleasure. Thanks Thank for you. having me on. Visit aria.com slash podcast for more information, links, and a full list of our episodes to date. New episodes are out the second Tuesday of every month. Hey.